So I'm sure a lot of people are thinking, great, you know, I let me check my level and see where I'm at. So both men and women. Um, so they may or may not find, well, they probably will find doctors that can test it, but a lot of doctors will be either unwilling to replace it because the level is not under what's considered, exactly. you know, normal because they, they kept the level so low, 300, right? So if it's, it's, above well, it, well, it's lower than that now. They continually to lower what I call the standard mean deviation. So the ends of the normal normalcy ranges. So now, if you can believe it, it's like 170 at the lower oh end God. for LabCorp and 746 high end. It's unbelievable. I mean, if I was going to put my tinfoil hat on and say that this is a conspiracy, you know, I could say that. But, you know, <laughs> traditionally dogmatic doctors will say, oh, no, Jay, it's not a conspiracy. It's just that people are fat. And the fatter our society gets, the more the hormonal, uh, you know, lower ends top off. And so they got a point, you know, it is based on obesity. I mean, look, this, this is crazy, by the way. And this was, as I told you, I just lectured at the Biohacking Congress uh, in Las Vegas on Sunday. It was really awesome. There were a lot of really smart, you know, clinicians and researchers that presented a, 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 an RN, you know, was talking about intermittent fasting and she had a really deep, profound lecture. And dude, the data... It's incredible. Mm. The last data that we had about obesity in North America was 2018 before the scamdemic, right? So it's like, here we are now, four years later, and health is so bad, Joy, in the United States. And, I, and I'll, I'll focus on the United States because you and I are in the United States, but it really is the West. 70% of all men and women over the age of 40 are obese, not fat obese, wow. like metabolically dysregulated. Basically they're ticking time bombs, right? We both know that they are going to get one of the various diseases of aging, whether it's heart disease, diabetes. I mean, they're all probably type two diabetes as, as I say that, but you know, those things lead to other horrible things like type three diabetes, which is, you know, your specialty, you know, Alzheimer's neurodegenerative disorder, you know, all these, you know, brain induced disease states that come later in life. So it's like, when you start realizing how bad it is, you, you, you see the importance of having a physician who understands the importance of optimizing the hormones. Because as the top doctors out there now in this space will tell you, first line of defense for type two diabetes or metabolic disorder dysregulation disease is hormonal optimization. So the smart people now literally are prescribing testosterone and modulating thyroid at the first incidence or onset of type two diabetes. Yes, it's a dietary interventional lifestyle. Yes, you have to lower your carbohydrates. Yes, you have to start improving your movement patterning. But again, if you don't have the energy because your hormones are just you know, decimated, it's not gonna matter all the advice and the, you know, the wellness coaching in the world is not gonna do a, you know, a bit of good until that person has the energy to make change, right? And the only way they're going to have energy to make change is to have their hormones optimized. So I, I'm glad in a lot of ways that now more and more doctors are seeing the importance of becoming hormonally optimized. But to your original question and point, you know, this is not something that you can take to your PPO doctor. It's just not going to be that way. And so I always say like, look, if you're one of those people that says, hey man, all I can afford is my copayment. It's $40 and these are the doctors I can go to. Well, then guess what? You're not going to get hormonally optimized because if in the event of a miracle, and yes, there are outliers out there and sure there's Kaiser doctors that are writing scripts for hormones for certain people, but they're not specialists. They're not, you know, specializing, working with thousands of male and females on, a horm on, on, on optimizing their hormones. So it's like, you know, I always say, and this is, you know, important for this podcast, like, if you're a male or, or man or woman, male or female, you know, concerned about, you know, what I call living a fully optimized life, if you cannot afford to spend twenty five hundred to ten thousand dollars a year on your personal health, then you have your, you have your priorities completely out of whack. Because as you know, it's really you got to look at it as you can't afford not to. One myocardial infarction, one you know type two diabetes issue, gout, you know glaucoma. These are $100,000 cost of healthcare 
regardless of the level of your benefits and your deductible. And people don't understand this until they go through it, you know, and that's why my wife, you know, she has this amazing comment that I've used in so many things I've done in my life, but she's like, most people don't care about their health until they don't have their health. Hmm. Right. And then, but that's where you become, right? So it's like these people that say like, I can't afford that doctor. He wants to charge me or she wants to charge me $500 a month to optimize my hormones. I'm like, bro, if you have a heart attack, you would have begged and pleaded to be paying that $500 a month. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and I know there's docs that are more than that. And there's of course docs that are less than that. But it's, again, I always, it comes back to it. It's in my course. If you're a six figure wager in the West and you're not spending, you know, six to 10 grand a year on your personalized healthcare, everything is backward for you because you are going to end up in that, you know, in that guy. And I see this all the time and I'm sure you see this too, you know, the 50, the 45 to 60 year old person, patient who comes in, who's got everything in, you know, done, they, they built their company, they got 10 million in the bank, and now they have one foot in the grave because they are an absolute metabolic emergency, yeah. right? They're obese, they're sick, they literally are inflamed, their face is red, they struggle to breathe. I mean, you see it all the time and they have all the money, but what are they going to do with it? They can't, they're dead. It's like- yeah. And, and, and then they come to you or they come to me and they're like, I want you to put me on a six month program. And you're like, dude, you just took 45 years to look like you do. Like, well, I've even seen people who outwardly looks good, you know, these very successful people, but they're eating junk, but they think, oh, okay, I'm exercising, yeah. I'm exercising it off, but they are not doing well on the exactly. inside. They right. may look still pretty darn good, but they, things could happen any moment. Oh, Totally. Totally. And we're not even talking about the whole idea of like, do you feel worth, you know, self-worth, right? Like, do you have lack of love and trust of self, right? Because you're right, because all of the external doesn't mean shit if you don't feel good internally about who you are and why you do it. But yeah, so I see that all the time. But, um, you know, for me, this is primary. As soon as you're 35, let's just use that as a baseline. And it can be younger, you know, depending on who you are and where you live. Um, but as soon as you're 35, you should absolutely be getting your blood work done at least, at least at a minimum once a year. Now, if you work with a great doctor, you know, and you're blessed to meet someone like you or other optimization physicians, like that's part of your deal. Like that's in your bag, right? But if you're just a person who's watching this podcast, not doing that, you know, you can go on to private lab companies. I say this all the time, you know, there's private MD labs, you know, I have a big national nationwide uh, affiliates slash sponsorship with them. You know, I have a landing page. I send people all the time. There's three different levels. You know, I call it, you know, there's the broke level, there's the medium level. And then there's like, Hey man, I want to know everything about me from a biomarker standpoint, you know, the anti-aging panel. And so it's like, you know, a different level for everybody, but that is, you know, the, the quickest way to solve a problem is obviously, you know, having awareness of what may or may not be the problem. And if you don't have that issue where it's like, okay, how do I know I'm what I'm working with? Like you can't even begin. Right. So that's always step one is like getting your labs done, you know, understanding if you have a clinical need, a, an actual deficiency. And you kind of said it earlier. Um, doctors nowadays, not the, not specialists, but PPO, HMO, family care, you know, family doctors um, are literally running their, their businesses now on avoiding the state medical licensing boards. Right. So like, they're not going to write a script for testosterone to somebody that comes in off the street because like, I don't know anything about testosterone and I don't want to have that red letter, you know, mark that says, you know, going through insurance that I have a patient on testosterone. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing that people have to worry about or not worry about, but think about like, why would you want to be working with a doctor who A, is only half educated on doing this and B, could literally email you one day and say, I'm sorry, I can't see you as a patient anymore because I have you on testosterone and my insurance company said, I can't do that. Right. So it's like, you have to work with a physician that, as I call it, and it has an experiential body of work. They've been prescribing hormones. I say, you know, in my course, I say at a minimum for 10 years, hmm. like I wouldn't work with any doctor who hasn't been prescribing for 10 years. I mean, it's literally the, the, the to what I call them the de novo minimum standard. Now, you know, there's docs I work with that have been prescribing testosterone for 24 years, right? So it's like 10 years is like, you know, enough. There's enough people out there that have been doing this that can do this. And again, if you're in LA or you're in New York or you're in Miami or Houston or Atlanta or San Francisco or San Diego or Chicago, there's plenty of doctors 
that you can pick from. You know, you can't come at me like when I was involved in this at the beginning when there was nobody. You know, now it's like there's a ton of people to pick from. It's just you got to do your homework. You got to ask the right questions. I mean, so much so, and I'm happy to send this to you. You know, I created a document like five years ago, and we actually just recently updated it uh, for the course on questions to ask your doctor. Mm. 10 questions to ask your doctor, whether it's a male or female, whether you're a male or female, before you choose them as your hormonal optimization doctor, right? Because like, there's just like some very basic things that like you should be able to get an acceptable answer. And if you can't bounce, you go find another one because there's plenty, you know? And that's the thing is like, you know, there's a lot of doctors nowadays that are prescribing hormones or prescribing peptides. They're prescribing all sorts of adjuvants, but it's like, who's educating?